All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Matt Brown. I work for uh, Igo Digital. We're uh, a, uh, a couple year old startup. We do uh, recommendation software. Um, and uh, we are a, a, a growing Ruby shop. <laughs> we are at least five of us here today. So, but uh, so um, in, in my world, uh, um, our salespeople are not also uh, developers, so they tend to sell things that uh, aren't always the funnest to implement. So I'm going to uh, take you down a little story of some things that we have to do. So, um, so again, we we do recommendation software primarily. Our primary delivery mechanism is websites. So we do, you know, we inject stuff in other people's sites to make good recommendations. The sales guys say, "Hey, that's uh, really cool. Can we do that in email too?" Because we want to sell email, everyone likes email, and so we're like, sure, we can do that too. Yeah, the way you put that makes it sound like they asked. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they said, hey, we're going to sell it in email, and I said, okay, I, I guess we can do that. And so, the one of the early customers we implemented was uh, used a, had an existing relationship with a ESP, a, a, a email service provider um, named Bronto. And so, first thing I do is go and we go look at the Bronto API. First of all, it's good news they have an API, so you can start to call them and do things, you know, magically. Uh, Bronto's API is pretty good. Um, there's a bunch of documentation for it. Um, let's see. Uh, um, although it's a little scary if you start to look, what you see is a bunch of uh, PHP documentation. So um, I got nervous on that, um, but it, it's it's well documented, and uh, I was like, okay, I can probably tackle this. But all of their sample code is all PHP. Um, turns out that uh, their interface is all SOAP based. Um, everyone knows how well Ruby and SOAP play together, so go and you start searching the Googles for some good soap stuff. Oh, sorry. Um, so here, first of all, first thing you know, you go check their WSDL and uh, they got about 7,000 methods, you know, their WSDL goes on and on and on. So okay, how do I, how do, I do this soap thing in Ruby? You start Googling and, and really soap for R is, is probably your best bet. Um, you start looking at the at the track site, so it's in track, so you know, uh-oh, probably hasn't been updated in a while. It's for a treat. Yeah, exactly. Then you, you start looking, oh, latest stable branch, 10-3-2007, uh, okay. Um, but hey, it works, so you, you, you download Soap for R, you get the gem installed, and you get this handy tool called Wizzle to Ruby. And uh, what it's going to do is, is uh, it's going to take um, the input of a uh, of a WSDL. So I say, hey, I got a WSDL. It's um, uh, it's uh, where's my WSDL? Pass it a WSDL. And it's pretty fancy. So this Wizdle to Ruby will do a number of things. If you have a Wizdle, it'll it'll generate servers for you. It'll generate clients for you. Um, this we just happen to need a client this time. It's pretty simple. Um, you just tell it, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna generate a client, and what it does is um, it generate it generates some files for you. So you see, you get this Bronto Soap API and pull. The service, a client, a driver, and a mapping uh, registry. So, um, a bunch of things, all that are meant to call the the Bronto API. Um, so, we'll just fire up um, IRB. Could you um, make them out a little bigger? Uh, sure. Apple Plus. Yep. Where, oops, where do we go? Oh, I'm in. Apple Pay will also work. Huh? Apple Pay. Oh, I'll get you fancy. <laughs> um, so, can you see that now? Is it close enough? Looks big on my screen. 
Um, so we're going to load up IRB. Uh, one of the things about the Bronto API is um, a couple of things. One, there's no sandbox, so you have to have an actual account to do any work. And once you get that actual account, they'll give you an API key. Um, and uh, from that API key, you have to, for each session of work you're going to do, um, so a, a typical session for us would be, hey, I found a couple hundred people I want to spam. Um, so I'm going to iterate through their email addresses and stick some, some junk in their, in their contact, and then I'm going to send a mailing. That would be a single session. So you'd send the API key off, it'd give you a short-term session, and you include that session in all your work. Um, so, so as to not uh, give away all my secrets, I'm going to load my token key in a special file. How about RD? That's just populating a constant so I don't have my user token saved for posterity in the video. No problem. If you need so, anything edited anytime, anyone, just let me know and I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, so um, so we're going to load up um, soap for R is the first thing we're going to load. We need that to do our work. That's the gem that gets loaded. Um, and then we're going to require also. Last time I looked, there are some other gems that were competing with Soap for R. Uh -huh. Is it still the case? Uh, I, I so it's been a while. So I did my original research probably six months ago. Is when we did it the first time. Okay. And it, Soap for R was the only thing I could get to work, and so okay. that's what I used. That, that narrows down. <laughs> what you chose it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had already been using Soap for R for some other things for probably six or eight months. Yep. Okay. Pretty well entrenched yep. in the stack. Okay, so I should have a. Um, I'm gonna record. I'm gonna load in a couple of files here. So the first thing we're gonna load is this uh, the service driver. We'll take a look at this thing here. the driver here and what this does is after you run whistle to Ruby it generates these files and what it's doing is it's creating a giant map of all the methods and what's required for each method call um, and because it's soap Matt, um, you, you, you gotta make that bigger sorry to keep heck on but, uh, no, it's fine um, you're not gonna read any of this anyway so <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a giant array of arrays of arrays with definitions about what the SOAP stuff wants. Um, so for each method, there's what its ins and outs are, what kind of, of uh, SOAP document it is, what kinds of exceptions it throws. And at the very bottom of the file, there's some magic ruby, which will turn this uh, big conglomeration of arrays into actual objects. Um, and that's what you'll actually use when it comes to the time to do some work. So, um, but this is pretty useful when you're trying to figure out how do I make the call to whatever it is I'm trying to call. Um, so first thing we need to do is um, so the client is a pretty simple client. You're just gonna create a new one with the Wisdom name. Bronto soap port type is what the name is because that's part of what's in the um, in the Wizdl. And then we're gonna pass my secret token in and we're gonna log in. And what it returned to me is the session ID, which is good for like 20 minutes. And um, and then the hardest part of, of doing all of this is I had to create a custom header because the, the Bronto Wisdle um, or the Bronto API requires you to, to use the SOAP header um, to include the, uh, your session key in and by default um, SOAP for R does not um, automatically create that SOAP header for you. So if you're doing it in, in PHP all you do is just call the set soap header. Um, it wasn't quite as simple in 
in Ruby. So in Ruby, what I had to do is I had to create my own Bronto header class, um, which knew how on creation and on consumption, how to spit out the right bits in the XML to include the session in the right place. Um, not overly complicated, but you know, this 15 lines of code probably took me two days to figure out what the heck I was trying to do. So um, all you have to do is instantiate the, the header and then say um, from here on out I want my session to be handled by the Bronto object. One of the really useful things about uh, soap for r is it allows you to, to dump everything that comes across the wire um, to standard air. So now if I make any um, so now let's imagine that I wanted to go look up a user in my existing Bronto account. Um, so in order to do anything in Bronto, every uh, nested element in the HTML in the XML that's going to be sent across is its own object. So there's a whole bunch of object object creation that occurs here. I'm going to go. I'm going to. I want to read a contact, so I need to create a new read contact object. Um, all this is in the documentation, which is which is pretty thorough. Um, if I look at read context not overly interesting but but uh, it, it's it's pretty powerful there's lots of stuff going on but you essentially populate a filter and uh, tell it what you want to get back so we're gonna we're gonna create a new read contact object create a filter um, and say from that filter I'm looking for an email that's equal to M Brown and Iowa digital magic happens and then finally I'm gonna make the call to Bronto here so here's the last call so here's what happened I created a filter I put my data in the filter I wanted I wanted my M Brown Igo digital user and then I passed in this read contact object to the read contact method and uh, it generates the soap action here. Um, so all of this, this is what the soap for R is doing for you. So you have this relatively nice object structure that then gets serialized to XML with all the right bits in all the right places. And so you know you get soap envelopes and here's my header with my session key um, embedded in there and then in the body uh, you know here's my request for a read a read contact with the filter of I want the one that's equal to in Brown and Iowa Digital and it returns an XML block to me here's some stuff and um, uh, and I can look at that and what's returned to me is a nice object and some simple data about me. I've been, I've been sent. What? I've opened eight different. I've had three sends, three emails sent to me, and I've opened those emails eight times. And the last time was sometime in 2009. Um, some basic data, but um, the Bronto API is pretty powerful. So you can add um, users dynamically to it. You can create lists. You can do dynamic mailings. Um, uh, and this is, uh, you know, Bronto is what you want to use if, you know, you're not, you're to the point where you can't send with Gmail because you're doing more than 500 a day. Let's say you're doing, I don't know, several thousand emails every day based off of, you know, whatever your activity is and you need an industrial strength ESP to send data and, or to send your emails and, you know, watch who's opening and who's clicking through and, are they buying stuff from what you sent out? Bronto provides all of that functionality for you and uh, has a reasonable API to do it. Unfortunately, it's, it's written in SOAP. So. There you go. Any questions? What, uh, Gordon, you mentioned, uh, you thought maybe there were some competitors in that space for what, oh, there's, do you know what? There's a ton of competitors in that ESP space, so exact target. Um, no, I, in terms oh, of the uh, SOFR R. Oh, it's a deal. 
Well, the last time I looked at it, I, I used so Ferrari. But, uh, <laughs> I, I was just curious if they still existed. Like Then there was some contention, but I haven't looked at it in a while. Yeah. Really, there is no more contention. No. And, there's and so is relatively popular. Oh. I've never used it, but I've never used so Ferrari either. So. <laughs> it just seems really difficult as compared to... The normal APIs. You, you well, I think you're dealing with soap. It's simple, so. Yeah, I mean, in terms of dealing with soap, it's pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. you're dealing with soap, so. If you're dealing with soap at Salesforce, there's active Salesforce, but that doesn't help you anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Active soap, why does it feel so dirty? Active Salesforce. Yeah. <laughs> we use, we use our force. Active yeah. Salesforce yeah. is awful. C consuming force, soap is guaranteed to make you sick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I've got a Salesforce running on Rails 3 either. It's one of our blockers. Yeah. Probably do that. So you guys were, I mean, as far as Bronto goes, uh, that's more based on what your client yep. wanted, or would you guys use Bronto at this point? If so our current, uh, we would use Bronto. I think we're actually swipping, switching corporately. Digital will we'll use Bronto as a email provider internally. But we, I have another project coming where I get to do the same thing with Exact Target. So it, it's all based on who is sold to and what how they want to do it. Yeah. So we have integrations with Cheetah Mail, and Delivera, and all kinds of people. So. A, lot, a lot of clients show up with an existing relationship yep. with the SD, and we just have to honor that. Plus, we don't really want to be in the ESP business, so there's no joy in that. Really, it's what all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you.